Okay, so... Which way did we want to go? To the right? We don't want to go... We don't want to take the stairs and go down. We don't want to go to the terrace. To... I am just completely lost already, which is kind of sad. I don't think I want to retrace my steps. Mm. Pretty sure we don't want to go back down. Pretty sure we don't... You know what, let's just, um... I want to go to the terrace for a moment. After continuing on through the passage for a while, the terrace comes into view on the right. I take a deep breath of the fresh evening air, hoping to calm my senses. Um, actually, wait, this might actually be the right way then. Just stumbling around <laughs> seems to be working just fine for me. Before me, Kid comes to an abrupt stop. My knife's ready, but all I can see is darkness. Then, from up ahead, I start to hear a clattering noise. Whatever it is, it's coming closer and closer. Is it more orcs or goblins? Yes, it is. It's the sound of iron-clad clanking, iron armor clanking against the stone floor. Let's stand ready. Oh yes, it's fight time. Grab a drink. A shot of courage tea. Don't get ahead of yourself, mate. She says with an ornery smile. Okay, kid, let's do this. The goblins are still five in all. They must have regrouped after we took out their leader. And they look just as pissed off and cocky as ever. Each of them's wearing the finest gear available to someone of their stature. And they are laughing and snomping their mouths at us. I don't know what snomping is, you'll have to figure it out on your own. We're gonna jump back again. Not a single moment after I leap back, the iron ball smashes into the stone floor. I can't believe this is deja vu. There's no way I'll survive fighting like that. Um, go for the hand again. It worked last time. Oh yes. I'm also probably gonna follow the same action here. Aiming for its heart. Yeah, because we didn't take any damage last time. <clears throat> the knife's edge disappears into the goblin's chest. The goblin looks down, laughing at us. It picks me up with both hands and throws me headfirst towards the wall. I bounce off of it like a cat, landing on my feet. As pissed off and as angry as ever, and in a ton of pain. But, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I tense up as it starts stepping towards me. I've got no weapon left with my fists. I'm no match for this thing in a scrap. But then it stumbles, and then again. And there we go. Saved by our hero. So. You got one, eh, mate? That showed him. Oh, let's catch our breath. Kneeling down, I rest for a minute to tend to my wounds, which aren't actually that bad, just a few bruises. Aye, no whining. You're not that bad, mate. I've seen worse hangovers than how you look right now. I wish I had her determination. After I finish applying my bandages, I get up, hoping I'll be okay. I can't start to give up now. But boy, these cuts are really starting to hurt. So apparently I did take damage. I didn't think I did, but... Damn. You got a thing or two to learn. But you're getting there, mate. Kid's mischievous eyes sparkle as I glance at her for a moment in the dim moonlight. I set off down the corridor with her, ready for what's next. We make our way down the dimly lit passageway. After a few moments, we come to an old, dusty door on the right. This is the clock tower storeroom, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm going to go inside again. Maybe something will have changed in here. We'll find the vault eventually. The room is quiet except for the sounds of the gears. And there's no sign of the hooded lady anywhere. Hello? Ma'am? 
ma'am? Well, if you're not here, say so, y'all hag. The silence is deafening. This is a waste of time. We should investigate elsewhere, says McGill, turning on his hill. We follow him out, eager to leave the repetitive clacking. From here, the passageway stretches to the right and left. Okay, we're going to go right. I am still completely lost. Proceeding ahead on the path, we come to a staircase going up and a firm-looking set of doors on the left. There better be treasure here. The smell of gold thick in the air, mate. Well, this is it, then. We did find it. It better open now, Kid says, putting the key we found into the lock. As the lock clicks, we're suddenly showered in all colors of light. Must have been an enchanted lock. Whatever's on the other side of this door has got to be good. The heavy door is open, slowly. And I am not feeling too confident about the fact we set off a trap. McGill, where were you on that one? Inside the room, I gasp at the awesome spectacle laid out before our eyes. Wow. Despite the sparse light, a brimming mountain of silver, gold, and other precious-looking artifacts shimmer and twinkle throughout this huge treasure vault. Kit is almost drooling at the sight. But to be fair, a sight like this would captivate most people. Enormous heaps of riches are piled before our eyes, in amounts most people will never see in their entire lives. It looks to be authentic. Remember, our goal is the flame. Do not waste time with frivolities. Frivol, yeah, frivol, blah, 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 says McGill flatly. Frivolisolies. Jeez, I told you, I know. Regardless of McGill's warning, Kid can't help but be taken aback. She gawks at the room's contents in awe. Until... Hey, what's that? In the back, on that pedestal. There, a palm-sized jewel radiates a pale crimson light, resting patiently behind the other treasure. It looks as though it's a roaring flame that's somehow been frozen in time. Frozen Flame the frozen flame! As McGill glides over towards the pedestal, I nervously call out. Come on, take it before someone realizes we're here. Be careful, we can't afford falling into a trap. Humph. Fine. Kid frustratedly says, glancing back at the door. Just remember, we're short on time. After investigating the pedestal for a little while, Serge was correct. It does seem to be trapped. McGill steps back, mumbling something in a low voice while placing his hand near the base of the pedestal. Slowly, an inscription begins to emerge on its surface, shining brightly for a moment. It should be disarmed now, he says before cautiously lifting the scarlet jewel from the pedestal. And we got the frozen flame. Oh, yeah. Woo. Wow. <sighs> we did it. With a sigh of relief, I turn towards McGill. He's looking intently at that flame. Way to go, McGill. All right, let's... Suddenly, the gem shatters into a thousand pieces in McGill's hand. It's a fake. Indeed. That fiend lynx would never have left the real flame in a place like this. Damn. Suddenly an alarm bell rings out. The room lights up and heavy metal bars fall in front of the door. Our only exit is blocked. Oh man. I look around only to see Kid holding a fancy crown, suddenly realizing what she's done. 
<laughs> Yay, we got the golden crown. It only cost us our freedom. That, that dim-witted dingo, I say to myself, almost sounding like kid. Suddenly, out of the corners of the room, four mechanical birds suddenly come to life. Intruder alert. Intruder alert. Their loud metallic screeching only adds to my uneasiness. It doesn't look like it will open, says McGill, checking the iron bars in front of the door. But, before McGill can even finish his sentence, we start to hear deep, snarling voices somewhere outside the room. Which way is it coming from? A heavy voice asks. Sounds like the treasure vault's alarm to me. The voice continues to get louder and louder as we stand motionless inside the room. We silently gawk at each other, hoping any one of us will have some sort of plan out of this trap. Kid hides herself under a mountain of gold coins. Quick, hide, mate. I frantically look around the room. There, over in the far corner. There's an empty treasure chest behind a post. I dash over towards it, climb in, and close the lid. If this works, I swear. Looks like there's no one here, boss. Hmm, that's strange. No one's ever been able to escape this old thing. Softly opening the lid of the chest, I take a peek outside through the small crack and see five goblins, bedecked in armor, having unlocked the iron bars and standing just a few feet from me. They look around the room restlessly, peeking into the shadows. Eventually, one of them raises his head to speak. Maybe a rat set it off. The cook was complaining about rats just the other day. Rats? Are you trying to tell me a rat set off the trap? A fat goblin questions the other with a doubtful face. And with that, squeak, 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 comes from the corner, over by where Kid's hiding. Taken aback, the goblins stop moving and look at each other. After a little while, the chief slowly strokes his chin and says, No, actually... Wasn't it stray cats that the cook was complaining about? Meow. Meow. Comes the voice a second time. Again, the goblins glance at each other. That's strange. What I heard was that it was a vicious heckran that raided the pantry. I think. Not a peep this time. I can only picture Kid racking her brain trying to think of what a heckran sounds like. Just as I thought. A thief, says one of the guards. But just as they start to approach... Ran, ran, ran. Oh. Well, then, it certainly is a Hecran. Without a doubt. One of them says, exchanging a smile with the others. Well, that's, that's pretty frightening, then. Come on, let's, let's just get out of here. The pack begins to file out of the treasure vault. But then, suddenly, the goblins all spring on the pile of gold. Well, what do we have here? Hey, get your hands off me, you slimy freaks, Kid says, struggling to break free. Slimy? A thief like yourself isn't in much of a position to criticize. One of them hollers at her. Kicking herself free of their grasp, Kid inches back into the corner of the room. The goblins start to corner her off, laughing to themselves. I quietly sneak out of my hiding place and unsheath my knife. Taking on an entire troop of armed goblins is a lost cause. Even for Kid. What should I do? Frankly, I'm in a quandary. We're not going to leave Kid behind. We're going to save her. Yeah. I can't abandon my friends, especially at a time like this. We've come this far. We live together or we die together. Gripping my knife tightly, 
I charge into the center of the room, shouting, Hey, you stupid oafs! They all turn around, staring at me blankly for a moment, before their expressions turn to rage. You just came here to die, didn't you, little man? You really want us to trample over your head that badly? Well, I suppose we can accommodate you, the goblin boss says, giving a deep laugh. Without a moment's hesitation, Kid shouts back, Don't think you can easily pick a fight with the likes of the great Kid and get away with it. Wait a minute. So you're the elusive Kid? The boss asks as its eyes softly narrow. How sweet this is. Perhaps if I deliver your head to Lord Lynx, he'll give me a nice reward. The boss goblin takes its morning star from its side. The huge iron ball jangles down to the floor. Please, don't confuse us with just any ordinary goblins. Striking fear into the hearts of men everywhere, we are Lynx's elite security force. The fearsome magical gobbler team. The boss fight. If you got time to spout off all that nonsense, then you sure got enough time to get your arses kicked, Kid shouts, exploding with a fierce roundhouse kick. The goblin teeters and staggers, dizzied by the brunt of her attack. Let's get em, boys! Start with that little twerp over there. Metal balls begin to swing around, swooshing through the air with deadly speed. Jet gobbler attack! Now! Sliding across the floor like the wind, the goblins simultaneously rush us. McGill, we need some magic here. Looking up, all I see is a goblin coming at me head on, ready to bash its weapon into my skull. Let's dodge. The metal ball rams into my shoulder, throwing me off balance. Writhing in pain, I'm barely able to lift my head in preparation for the next attack. Ha 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 ha! Good boy! Come on, let's have some more fun. Just then, I start to hear an odd howling noise from behind me. I turn around to see McGill's black wind spell streaking out from his fingertips, transforming in midair into a countless number of razors. They fly like homing missiles into one of the goblins, cutting it to shreds. How can a human have such power? Who are you? The goblin shrieks in fear as its body is effortlessly torn to pieces. McGill's expression remains unchanged as he silently surveys the scene, looking for his next target. Another huge iron ball whizzes through the air, swinging towards me. Um, let's roll over and dodge it. As quickly as I can, I roll over and try to dodge the attack. God. So I'm just going to have to press the attack on these guys, I'm sure, apparently now. However, the ball strikes me square in the back, sending me clear off my feet. I wasn't wanting to tackle the fully armor-clad goblin. I hit the ground with a hard thud as the back of my head smacks against the hard stone floor. I roll over and try to recover, but the throbs of pain are unbearable. Sing, boy! Sing the song of pain. Scampering away, I suddenly see a dark shadow cover the ground in front of me. Fearfully looking up, a huge goblin towers directly above my quivering body. Die! The goblin roars, swinging his weapon down. No! I won't go that easy. Beside me, an arrow of light jumps out from McGill's fingertips, instantly pulverizing the goblin. The goblin topples to the ground, half vaporized. McGill stares at it with his ever-present eyes of steel as his dark cape flaps in the breeze. Somehow, I manage to reel to my feet and avoid the blow. Looking up, though, all I see is another goblin coming at me ready to bash my weapon into its skull. Into my skull. Let's just parry this one. Frantically parrying the goblin's attack, I try to lunge with my knife. Quick as a mouse, I slice into his side. It lets loose a gnarling scream of pain as its putrid face contorts in agony. Just then, I start to hear another odd howling noise from behind me. It's another black wind spell, 
and it shreds another goblin. Uh, how is this possible? Grah. And it suddenly turned into a thousand pieces of meat and clump crumples to the ground. And, um, ram them. I've got to think of a better strategy than just standing around trying to dodge. I quickly put my weight onto the goblin, trying to force it off balance. Unfazed, though, it moves only a little as I collide with it. I, however, bump off and tumble onto the ground. Ugh, I scream as the goblin kicks me in the ribs and I slide across the floor. Beside me, an arrow of light jumps out from McGill's fingertips and vaporizes this one, too. McGill stares at it unflinchingly. Long live Lord Lynx! Glory to the magical gobblers! says the last of the goblins as it comes crashing to the ground in a bloody mess. <sighs> That's the last of them. Man. Don't know when I should press the attack and whenever I should just be on the defense. Easy, easy. Kid says, wiping some sweat off her brow. Damn it, Sag. You're such a loon. Thinking you could rescue me from those goons like that? <laughs> It worked out pretty well, though, eh, mate? We must be on our way, McGill says. There's no way of knowing who else knows we're here now. I know. That bastard's causing us too much trouble. I said they were Lynx's personal guards, yeah? They might have some valuable stuff on them. But before she even finishes speaking, Kid starts to search through the head goblin's clothes. Sheesh. There's really no need to be such a scavenger. Aye. What's this? She says, removing a small metal object from the goblin's pocket. It's a hand-shaped medallion of some sort, covered in archaic-looking symbols. It's a key, McGill says, walking over towards us. These markings suggest it unlocks a certain magical seal. Wow. Well, their loss, Kid says, casually putting the plate in her pocket. Damn it, they don't have any other good stuff. Cheap goblins. She stands up and looks around, sighing. It'd be a wa it'd be a waste to leave all this loot behind, though. We can always come back for it later, Kid. Kid turns around and grins. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's go. The night won't last forever. Oh, man. <clears throat> From the treasure vault, paths extend to the left and right. The right path proceeds back towards the terrace while an ascending staircase lies to the left. I think I'm going to uh, end the video here and save it. And whenever we come back, I'm thinking about maybe we should make our way all the way back to that that mouth and see if this is the thing it wants to eat if this is the key that we needed because um, otherwise I honestly have no idea where there's any magical seals if I've already bumped into one then I've apparently forgotten and I doubt the piranhas want anything to do with this